This is the Fertility Friday Podcast, episode number 79. Welcome to the 79th episode of the Fertility Friday Podcast. Thank you for joining me today. I'm Lisa from fertilityfriday.com, and this is your source for information about the fertility awareness method and all things fertility. If you've been listening to the podcast for a while, then you already know just how passionate I am about connecting you with the tools and information that you need to improve your menstrual cycle health and your fertility. And of course, that's why I started the podcast in the first place, because I believe that every woman has the right to know exactly how her body and her fertility works. And I feel so privileged to be able to share my passion for body literacy and fertility awareness with you every single week. Fertility awareness is so much more than just birth control or trying to get pregnant because it truly gives you a window into your own health and fertility. And I love sharing my expertise with my clients and helping them to understand their charts and connect with their cycles. So if you've recently discovered fertility awareness, but you're not feeling confident about using it for birth control just yet, or if you've been charting your cycles for a while, uh, but your cycles are kind of all over the place and you can't figure out what's going on with your mucus or your cervix, I can help. Get started today with a free 15-minute consultation with me by heading over to fertilityfriday.com slash coaching, or just click the work with me button on my website. I can't wait to delve in with you and get started. And I would also like to invite you to sign up for the Fertility Friday newsletter. Just head over to fertilityfriday.com slash ebook, and as a gift to you, you'll receive a free copy of my new ebook, where I reveal what to expect when coming off of hormonal contraceptives, and I share five steps to restoring healthy menstrual cycles post-pill. And in today's show, I wanted to share with you my top 10 unexpected side effects when coming off the pill. I wrote a blog post a while ago on this topic, (laughs) and I've received so many comments and so many views that I decided to share it with you today in a podcast format. So I hope you enjoy it. I will link the initial or the original post in the show notes page, but I wanted to start by actually talking about what are hormonal contraceptives. So without delving too deep into this topic, because I'm sure it could be the topic of an entire podcast, I just wanted to kind of outline what hormonal contraceptives actually are. So a lot of times you hear people refer to hormonal contraceptives in terms of estrogen and progesterone, uh, but it's important to know that the hormones that are found in hormonal contraceptives are not the same thing (laughs) as the hormones that are found in our body. Uh, So in hormonal contraceptives, whether it be uh, the pill or the patch or the shot or the implant or the IUD uh, with the hormonal IUD, the marina, all of these hormonal contraceptives contain synthetic estrogens, progesterones, progestins, they're often called, or estrins, some combination of the two. And then of course, some of them contain say progesterone only. But the important thing to know is that they're synthetic hormones. So they're man-made hormones. And that means that they're foreign to the body. So they're not doing the exact same thing as our natural hormones are doing into our body. And by nature, in order for hormonal contraceptives to work, they have to disrupt the endocrine system. And what they're doing is they're disrupting the health of a woman's endocrine system to make her temporarily infertile or temporarily sterile. And as most of us know, you know, hormonal contraceptives work in three ways. They basically work by altering three main processes in the body. Those would be ovulation and then your endometrial lining and cervical mucus. Hormonal contraceptives, they disrupt ovulation. So in order for your body to ovulate, your brain has to talk to your ovaries. So your brain sends, your pituitary gland in particular, sends a signal to your ovaries and tells them uh, when to ovulate, tells them when to produce estrogen, all those types of things. And so one of the things that hormonal contraceptives do is it interferes with that, your, your brain's ability to signal to your ovaries. So that's how the pill disrupts ovulation. So the second, you know, the endometrial lining. So the endometrial lining is what lines the uterus. And what happens is the hormones in the hormonal contraceptives, they prevent the uterine lining from ever fully developing. Basically, your uterine lining just never fully develops. In order for your uterine lining to fully develop, you have to have both phases of your menstrual cycle. You actually have to have the pre-ovulatory phase before you ovulate that builds up the the uterine lining. And then you also have to have the post-ovulatory phase, which is where the lining actually matures and develops and becomes ready for an egg to implant. 
if you're on hormonal contraceptives and you're not ovulating, then your uterine lining never fully develops. And that makes it inhospitable to an egg. And that's why that's number two. So first ovulation is disrupted. And then second endometrial lining is not capable of sustaining life. (laughs) And then the third aspect is your cervical mucus. Hormonal contraceptives prevent your cervix from producing fertile quality mucus. And so basically the the mucus in the cervix just remains thick and, and impenetrable. So that's the those are the three ways that hormonal contraceptives work to prevent a woman from getting pregnant. That's why they're so effective because they're kind of attacking on all fronts. And so I wanted to kind of start this conversation just by giving a very brief overview. Now there are nuances to different birth control methods. Obviously, for example, the IUD irritates the uterine lining and and makes it inhospitable to sperm. So each hormonal contraceptive has different dosing, different levels of these synthetic hormones and may have slightly different interactions. But that gives you a good overview of why hormonal contraceptives are so effective in preventing pregnancy. But of course, these effects don't come without side effects. And so today I wanted to talk about what are some of the things that you might see happen uh, if you've recently gone off the pill or, you know, maybe you went been off of it for a long time and you can kind of t- take a look at these things and see if you experienced any of them. The first one I wanted to start with is that you might actually get your sex drive back. <laughs> Woohoo! So unfortunately, when a woman is on hormonal contraceptives, hormonal contraceptives then interfere, like I mentioned, with the body's you know, communication system, and it also suppresses the body's natural hormones. So the interesting thing is when a woman is on the birth control pill, she's still producing her natural estrogens and progesterones. But because the hormonal contraceptives are the synthetic hormones at such a high level, the the woman's natural hormone levels actually go way, way, way down. And if, if you were to compare it, they would actually, the levels in a woman on uh, hormonal birth control would be comparable to a woman in menopause. So I think it's really interesting because a lot of the time you'll hear people compare being on the pill to like a fake sense, a fake state of pregnancy, which drives me nuts because being on the pill is nothing like being pregnant hormonally. When a woman is pregnant, she has huge, high, high levels of progesterone which is an amazing hormone that's very protective and works in combination with estrogen and kind of prevents any negative uh, impacts of estrogen just unopposed. Uh, During pregnancy, a woman also has really high levels of estrogen, but these hormones then work together in concert. So pregnancy is uh, actually a healthy, normal, natural (laughs) hormonal state, whereas uh, on hormonal contraceptives, it's a bit different. So I think that's a really interesting thing to know because that actually brings me exactly to my topic of sex drive. So if you think about the implications of having your natural hormonal levels at the same comparable level to a woman who's in menopause, then that would make sense why some women do experience that when they're on hormonal contraceptives, they have a lower sex drive or they lose their sex drive altogether. And one of the reasons why this happens as well is twofold. One, because when a woman is on hormonal contraceptives, she may have a lower level of testosterone. And another unfortunate effect is that a woman may experience an increase of a hormone called sex hormone binding globulin. I think of it kind of like as a, a broom that sweeps up all the free testosterone. So it's what this hormone does is it actually binds to free testosterone in the bloodstream. And one of the key factors in sex drive is actually testosterone. So, you know, a woman who's not on hormonal contraceptives will have a certain amount of testosterone that her body will use, and that contributes to her natural sex drive. When a woman is on hormonal contraceptives, her testosterone is actually reduced. And in addition to that, she has an increased level of this sex hormone binding globulin that actually binds to the testosterone. So it kind of takes all of the available testosterone that's in the bloodstream and kind of pulls it out and binds to it so that your body can't use it. And so what that means is that can impair her sex drive. 
because testosterone is intimately connected with her sex drive. So then some women on the pill don't have much of a sex drive. And one of the great side effects of going off the pill is you might actually get your sex drive back, which is amazing. <laughs> um, one caveat to that is that unfortunately, so it, it, it depends on the woman. So some women's sex drive might come back faster than others and other women may, it may take a little bit more time for their sex drive to come back. Uh, because there have been studies that show that even after a woman stops taking hormonal contraceptive, she may still have elevated levels of this sex hormone binding globulin in her bloodstream. So unfortunately, for some women, this is uh, the sex drive might be something that takes some time to come back and might be something that she has to work on. Um, but I mean, I remember when I was in college, one of my girlfriends, she went on the pill and she noticed right away that her sex drive went away. <laughs> and I remember her joking to me. She's like, what the heck is the point of me being on the pill if I don't have a sex drive? So fortunately, in her case, she noticed it right away and found a different contraceptive option for herself. Okay, so the second side effect that you might notice after going off the pill is breast related. Your breasts might actually get smaller or they and they may not be as sore and tender all the time i don't know about you but when i i remember when i was uh so back when i was in high school and i was put on hormonal contraceptives for period pain i remember that as soon as i went on the pill my breasts got bigger uh, which was kind of cool you know being 16 but <laughs> the the bad side of that was that they were always sore it was kind of like i was going back to those adolescent years when my breast buds were growing and they were just sore all the time. So it was really, I found it to be really annoying. <laughs> and I know one of the, you know, side effects and one of the things that women talk about a lot are, you know, going on the pill, your breasts get bigger and then, you know, are they going to change when you go off? So, you know, if you did notice that, you know, being on the pill, your, your breasts were tender or, or uh, they were bigger than they were when you weren't on the pill, then you might notice after you go off the pill that your breasts might kind of, um, get a little bit smaller and then they won't be sore all the time. But the interesting thing when you're not on the pill is you may start to notice the cyclical changes that happen in your breast tissue uh, and the feeling of your breasts. So that was something that I noticed that was really interesting. So I'm sure that every woman's experience uh, is a little bit different. But one of the things that I noticed was that in my uh, pre ovulatory phase, my breasts were um, I don't know, they were just kind of hanging out. Like I didn't really have much, I didn't notice anything, which was a change because when I was on the pill, they were sore all the time. <laughs> so it was kind of nice. They were kind of smaller, I guess you could say. And, uh, but then after ovulation, as I got closer and closer towards my period, they would actually start to get bigger and a little bit more tender. So instead of them just being tender and sore all the time, <laughs> they were, uh, in my case, they were a little bit, they would get a little bit bigger and a little bit more tender prior to ovulation. And then, you know, if you go on to get pregnant at some point, then your breasts change again during pregnancy. <laughs> some women experience uh, that their breasts increase in size a ton, go up a couple bra sizes. And then if you breastfeed, that's a whole other story. I, mean, I feel like my breasts went up like two sizes when my milk came in. So it's really interesting the different changes that happen in your breasts. So one of the things that you might notice is kind of that cyclical change happening in your breasts that you would not have noticed or you would not have experienced while while you were on the pill. So number three, your mood might change for the better. Uh, so this is something that I've talked a lot about on the podcast. And, you know, one of the episodes that I did with Holly Greg Spall, which I'll link to in the show notes, we talked a lot about the emotional impact uh, that the pill can have on some women. A lot of women are on the pill and they don't notice any emotional changes. And a lot of women will say, you know, I never had that experience. But unfortunately, a lot of women do notice that their emotions are just, you know, on the pill, they're just, it's just not good. So there's so many different things that, um, that a woman can experience. Some women experience anxiety and kind of intrusive thoughts. I think one of the really kind of scary things that I remember talking about with Holly was just the that when she was on, I think she said that she was on Yaz, she thought that she, there's just, <laughs> she kind of thought that it was just her, but she was experiencing all these kind of anxious thoughts. Like if her, if her, you know, partner wasn't calling her or something, she would think that he was 
there was some the big deal about it and it was kind of like really problematic in terms of how you know that that I call it the crazy train in your head would kind of go there and so she thought it was just her but then she, lo and behold she finds a support group with women who were also on the same yes and they were talking about the same thing so that's of course a bit of an extreme example but it's really interesting so some women will talk about how they just felt kind of muted so they they just they didn't necessarily feel like they had the high highs or the low lows they were just kind of stable kind of dulling themselves in a way like they just weren't shining as brightly that they didn't really um they didn't really have that full true expression of themselves and you know for women who would say that they didn't experience any type of emotional changes i always have to wonder you know for those women who are put on hormonal contraceptives before they fully know themselves so as a teenager you know i was still figuring out who i was <laughs> i didn't really feel so comfortable in my skin when i was 14 and 15 and 16 i really grew into myself and i i still am <laughs> growing into myself so i can't help but wonder if a, if a woman is uh, or a girl is put on hormonal contraceptives you know when she's like 13 14 how would she know if it was muting her you know maybe she just thinks or would just think that she was kind of dull or maybe i'm just not maybe i'm just kind of a depressed person or maybe i'm not you know i'm just not like that and the interesting thing is in the interview i did with justina thompson which i'll also link to in the in the show notes page she shared an experience that was just like that she thought that you know, maybe this is just me. And eventually she had to question, you know, I used to be so vibrant. I used to be, I used to feel so alive. And, and now I just don't feel like that. And she actually ended up finding, figuring out that it was the hormonal contraceptives that played a role in that. So one of the, you know, unexpected side effects that you might experience when going off the pill is that you might find that your mood changes for the better. You might find that, you feel more like yourself or you might find that certain things go away like you might find that you know certain anxieties or certain um just mood changes just just stop and i i'll never forget you know one of my closest girlfriends again in university see i feel like i had all of these experiences for a reason i feel like maybe not everyone has those experiences, but I had so many friends in my life that just did not have good experiences with the pill. Um, And then of course I wasn't on it by that time because I was using fertility awareness even back then. And so I just, I I think it's really interesting that I had all of these different types of experiences, but you know, one of my close girlfriends in in university, she went on, on the pill, but she was only able to go on it. If I remember correctly for maybe a month, because she is just a sweet, uh, happy disposition she, a person. She just, she's always just, well, no one's always happy, but she's, just, she's very, she's very kind and she's just generally, you know, happy and, and, you know, inspiring and just, you know, loving life. And so she goes on the pill and, you know, all of a sudden she's having these weird mood swings. Like she's happy one minute, crying the next to the point that her partner was like, you need to go off the pill. You're turning into a crazy person. And so, you know, she had the, the, again, that, that experience. And so she tried the pill and and within about a month or so she had to go off of it because, uh, it just, it couldn't mesh with her. And so, From what I know, that was the only time she's ever been on hormonal contraceptives. So not every woman has an experience that's that obvious. Um, I think if you have an experience that's that obvious, then you end up having to, you you know, you kind of, I know that this isn't going to work for me. And then you kind of go off of it. But if your experience is, is not as obvious, then you might not even have the opportunity to attribute it to the pill until years later, you know, when you go off of it for other reasons. So that's number three. And going on to the fourth unexpected side effect of going off the pill. So number four, you'll probably experience a return of any symptoms that the pill was masking. And I think this one, many women know in the back of their minds, and it's what keeps them on the pill for years. And uh, I have no judgment around that because um, 
to put it into perspective, you know, I struggled with painful periods for years. And, you know, to say painful periods makes it seem, you know, it, that's a bit up to interpretation. But um, let's just put it this way. When I went into labor <laughs> with my first child, I didn't think I was in labor because I, I thought to myself, man, my period pain is way worse than this. Of course, eventually the labor, the contractions got to the point that they were pretty intense, but it took a while for them to really get to the point that they were worse than my period pain. So if that gives you um, <laughs> just an understanding of how painful it was. So if, if I wasn't able to get to the Advil in time, I would be on the floor and I wouldn't really, I couldn't function. I wouldn't be able to go anywhere. So really, I just had to take the Advil and wait for it to kick in. And so some of you who may have experienced this type of period pain may be familiar with the window. So there was a window at which if I took the pill, the the pain pill within the window then i would nip it in the bud but if i didn't get the window then i would potentially just be killed over in pain for the next couple hours <laughs> and eventually i would fall asleep and wake up and the the pain would have subsided because of the the pill uh the um advil or or whatever so um so i guess i'm just giving that example to say that i totally get it i i understand because when you have that type of experience with on, on your period, it interferes with your life. Uh, you can't function. And so, you know, the anxiety around going off of it, you know, what the heck am I going to do? Uh, I know that I had really painful periods. That's why I'm on the pill. And so if I go off of it, what am I going to do about this period pain? You know, unfortunately, if you haven't made any significant changes, you know, in terms of diet, lifestyle, etc., uh, or haven't necessarily identified the root cause of, of that type of symptom, then that's something that may come back. And so that also applies, say, to, um, you know, if, if you had kind of irregular cycles, if your ovulation was all over the place, if you had PCOS symptoms, if you had really bad acne, things like that. If you haven't done anything to address, uh, you know, the root cause of any of those issues, you may find that those things do come back. And I would say sometimes with vengeance, when you come off of the pill. And so I mean, that's something to consider. Painful menstruation, for example, is not just a laughing matter. It is a horrible thing. And it just, yeah, it's, it's not fun. And especially if you have endometriosis, and it's a whole other level of pain. You know, one of the, the great things to, to keep in mind is that if you know that that is what's holding you back from going off the pill, one of the things that I would suggest is not just going off of it cold turkey, to consider actually working with, say, a naturopath or, uh, you know, an acupuncturist or um, someone, a holistic health practitioner, for example, a justice holistic health practitioner, you know, like myself at least three months before you plan to go off of it. And this way you could actually, you know, assess your diet, assess your lifestyle, try to address some of the causes for say the painful period, you know, inflammation and um, dietary things. And you can actually work on those things and kind of get yourself started before you even go off of the pill. So that when you finally do go off the pill, then you've already started to improve the health of your body. So if that's a serious issue for you, and that's something that you're really concerned about, just know that you can actually start preparing for that change before you go off of it. And that can make going off of it less scary. And also, the fact that you're kind of seeing someone and being proactive means that if you do encounter any challenges, then you, you, you're supported. And then you can kind of address those. And you're not just alone in that. I think similarly to acne, I think acne is huge, huge reason that keeps women on the pill. Uh, and also, when you go off of the pill, for example, if you've been on the pill since you were 16, because of bad acne, and now you're, you know, 32 or something. Uh, yeah, it's not fun to have a face full of zits when you're an adult. It's so frustrating, because then you feel like you're back to teenager and that's oh yeah so it's it's just not okay <laughs> it's not okay and I you know one of the things to keep in mind is that when you arm yourself with information and support then you know it's not the same as when you were a teenager um like when I was a teenager I didn't know any of this stuff you know I didn't know anything about you know trying to prevent acne through dietary changes and improving 
uh, gut health and, you know, trying to do some detoxification. Like I didn't know anything about that, let alone know anything about the, you know, the way that your diet is related to your period pain and, and how, you know, some of that inflammation can be caused by eating, you know, industrial seed oils, like vegetable oils, if you're cooking with canola oil, those types of things can contribute to your period pain. So there's a lot of things you can do uh, in terms of addressing acne, addressing pain and addressing, you know, even, um, even PMS symptoms that are totally out of hand. So there's a lot of things you can do to address those things. And I think one thing to remind yourself is that it's different now, you know, Uh, it may have been really scary when you first went on it, however many years ago when you were say, you know, in your 20s, or in your teens, (laughs) and you've been on it for so long. But just remember that, you know, it's different now, you're an adult now, you have a lot more information than you did before. And there is, there are ways to address these issues. So unfortunately, if you went on the pill for certain issues, uh, like I talked about, they might come back with a vengeance, but armed with information, armed with support, and a little bit of patience, because that's the other thing. If you go off of the pill and then you find that your acne comes back, it it could take a few months before you can get it under control through dietary changes and things like that. So it, it, it can take a bit of patience. But given where you're at now, and the knowledge that you have, and also your motivation and drive, you can actually address these issues. And you can address them naturally. The fifth unexpected side effect of going off of hormonal contraceptives, your period may not return for months. I think that it's because of the things that we're told. If you were to ask your doctor, you know, do I need to go off the pill, you know, several months before I want to start trying for a baby? Your doctor would probably tell you that's not necessary. When you're ready to start trying for a baby, just go off the pill and start trying. (laughs) And, uh, you know, we all know that some women just get pregnant right away and some women even get pregnant while they're still on the pill. But a lot of women experience a delay in the return of their menstruation. And so the health of your menstrual cycle after coming off of hormonal contraceptives is related to a lot of different factors from when, you know, you first, how old you were when you were first put on it, if your cycles were able to mature as, you know, as a woman, when you have your first menstruation, it takes several years for your cycles to actually mature for your, for your reproductive organs to mature. Because remember, you're still an adolescent when you start menstruating and uh, even your breasts haven't matured yet (laughs) when your body hasn't matured yet. So it makes sense that uh, it takes uh, several years for your menstruation to mature and for your reproductive organs to mature. And so then what that mature menstrual cycle looks like is eventually is when you first start, your cycles might be uh, a bit more irregular. Your, you know, each cycle may not be ovulatory, but then by the time your cycles mature, then you're having kind of regular, robust, healthy, uh, ovulatory cycles. But if that normal maturation process is not allowed to take to happen the way that it should, then when you finally go off of the pill, so if you were put on the pill, then right after you, you know, got your first period or something when you were 13 or something like that. And then you finally go off of the the pill, you know, now you're 26. And you know, you're ready to start trying to conceive. Well, uh, what your doctor may not tell you is that since your cycle didn't actually get to the mature maturation stage, your cycle is going to continue where it left off and continue to mature. And so that means that when you f- go off of the pill, you your period may not return for, it depends on average. It takes about nine cycles uh, or nine months for a woman's cycles to return and start to, you know, look more healthy. And But if your cycles hadn't developed, then it's going to take several cycles for your menstrual cycles to start getting robust and healthy and mature. So it's, it's, there's a lot to, to think about. I think that it's really hard for, for women when they first go off the pill, especially if their period doesn't return for, you know, one month, two months, three months. And then when it finally does return, especially if you're charting your cycles, you notice all this stuff that's not looking like it's supposed to. <laughs> um, you know, you might notice uh, cervical mucus patterns that don't look healthy or normal. You might notice, you know, the, the cycle parameters aren't where they need 
need to be. You might notice your luteal phase is, is, isn't long enough. And there's all these different things that, that you might notice when you go off of the pill. And so it's really important to just at least know that it may take several months for your period to return. And then it may take even longer for your cycles to start looking healthy. And the the key thing I think is that women were all told, you know, just to, you can go off the pill and just start trying right away. And of course you can do whatever you want. Uh, but you could also in, in a perfect world <laughs> when everything where, where, where we can, we have the time uh, and the patience to do, you know, things kind of in, in the most optimal way, I guess you could say, is that you'd want to see at least three robust, healthy menstrual cycles before you start trying. And that's the last thing that most women want to hear, especially because you've probably been waiting for so long for the right opportunity to start trying for a baby. Now it's here and you definitely don't have any more time to wait because you've already been waiting. But that's just something to keep in mind. And I think we all just do the best that we can where we're at. And so, you know, you'll know what's best for you. But it's just something to consider that um, if you're thinking about starting a family, if you have a bit of time before, you know, you, you're you really intending to try, you may want to consider going off the pill and seeing what happens with your cycle, seeing how long it takes for your period to return, and then really delving in and starting to chart your cycles, see what your mucus is like, make sure you're ovulating, you know, find out if you're ovulating regularly, uh, and see what your cycle health is like. Your cycle health will tell you so much information about your hormonal health, your endocrine health, your thyroid health, your um, just overall, uh, especially related to fertility. And so in a perfect world, you would actually give yourself the time to to be able to assess what's happening and to address any issues that you see. Because for many women, they find that after going off the pill, it's just most women don't necessarily go off the pill and then just start cycling perfectly afterwards. For many women, it does take a little bit of time. Before I get into the second half there, so to recap, the first five unexpected effects that I've gone through so far. The first one, you might actually get your sex drive back, which is awesome. The second one, your boobs might get smaller. (laughs) So your breasts might change. And you might start to notice that instead of just being sore all the time or, or just being kind of full, yeah, full and sore, kind of irritated all the time, you might know, start to notice fluctuations in your breasts as as your menstrual cycle goes. So cyclical breast changes. Uh, The third one, your mood might change for the better. Number four, you'll probably experience a return of any symptoms that the pill is masking. And number five, your period may not return for months. (laughs) Number six, then you'll have to find a new birth control method that you trust. So if you're going off of hormonal contraceptives and you're not ready to start trying for a baby, then you will definitely have to find a new birth control method that you trust. And this can be such a big, scary thing. I find it so interesting because I'm coming from the complete opposite perspective. So given that I've actually never used hormonal birth control as birth control in my whole life, I've always used fertility awareness. uh, I've used condoms. I've used, that's basically it actually, (laughs) if I think about it, and to some degree withdrawal. And it's interesting because I've had so many conversations with women who are on hormonal contraceptives and it's like they fully believe that the second they go off of it, they will get pregnant that day. And they really doubt their own ability to successfully be able to prevent pregnancy without it. And I think it's really interesting, especially because it's kind of like I see I see these women going into this in the mindset that they were at when they first started taking the pill. So maybe when they first started taking the pill, they were 19 or they were 16. And at that time, they weren't necessarily confident in their ability to to use, you know, condoms regularly or, you know, be responsible enough to prevent pregnancy. So the pill was like the the thing that, okay, you just, it allows you to feel comfortable. But the interesting thing is that I feel like in a lot of these conversations that I have, these women discount their their ability to <laughs> to just to just do what needs to be done. And so I think that you really have to just sit with that with yourself and and think about what's what's going to be right for you. 
And just remember that whatever decision you make, you have the power to, to follow through. You can do it. Trust me. <laughs> there's, me like, there's so many couples or, you know, in the world that don't use hormonal contraceptives, but still plan successfully their family, <laughs> myself included, where I, I've never had an accident. Even though we're not on, we were never on the pill, <laughs> my partner and I, we were always able to, to, to navigate that. So whether it was with condoms, whether it was with fertility awareness, and I think that when you're going into that realm, when you're going off of hormonal contraceptives, it is so helpful to be able to pinpoint your fertile window. It is so helpful to be able to know that period of time, because then instead of having to, you know, quote unquote, worry every single day, because we're all told that we can have fertile every, every single day, then you really have to figure out how to manage your fertility within that window. And of course, there's lots of different ways to manage it within that window. So I mean, there's different barriers, like there's uh, the condom, the diaphragm, the Kaya diaphragm, there's the cervical cap. And in addition to that, you know, if a woman's using the fertility awareness method, uh, you can have alternative sex on those days, or you can avoid sex on those days, depending on what your preference. But at the end of the day, it's really a conversation that you need to have with your partner and really figure out what you're comfortable with. And it can be really scary and really challenging because that's a huge change from not having to worry about any type of barrier, any type of contraceptive other than the hormones to have to actually know that you have to do it and be on top of it every time uh, you have sex. You have to kind of negotiate that every time. So it's definitely a change. It's definitely different. But I would say that you can do it. <laughs> Trust me, you can do it. It just, it's like anything else. Um, once you get into the habit of it, then it becomes uh, pretty easy. Number seven, so you'll finally have the opportunity to learn how your body actually works. So I've been peppering that idea throughout the podcast, but I think that it's really important to point out, as I mentioned before, that when you're on the pill, you're not ovulating, you're not having a, a, a menstrual cycle, you're having a fake period. And also, as I mentioned, your hormone levels are not at the level of kind of the natural flow of things, if you will. And when you go off hormonal contraceptives, you actually get to be in your body again at full capacity. And so your body starts making those hormones again, starts making the estrogen, starts, you know, making progesterone after you ovulate. Because when you're on the pill, your body's not making a whole lot of progesterone or a whole, whole lot of your natural estrogen. And our bodies are not separate <laughs> from our menstrual cycle. And our emotions are intertwined with it as well, because as we know, our hormones have an impact on our emotions. So when you come off of hormonal contraceptives, you get to feel like, you know, what it really feels like to be you in your full kind of power and your full capacity and also testosterone, as I talked about as well. And so that can, as we talked about, have an impact on your sex drive but it can also have an impact on your creativity. It can have an impact on a lot of different things. And one of the things that I've talked about on the podcast is just the cyclical nature of the menstrual cycle. And I think there's been a lot of amazing articles and um, there's been a lot of really neat um, focus on this particular issue in the last couple of years. But women are starting to realize that, you know, different parts of their menstrual cycle are associated with different aspects of themselves, of their creativity, of their energy levels. And when women really get in tune with what's happening in their menstrual cycles, we can optimize that, like we can hack it, you know, and, and really schedule things around times that work well for us. So for example, you know, if you're throwing a huge party that <laughs> requires a ton of planning and it's going to be a long day, you might not want to schedule that party around, you know, the, the days before your menstruation, because you might know through charting your cycles that the days before menstruation, you tend to have a bit lower of energy and maybe you tend to kind of turn inward a little bit more. So that would be true for me, where the days before menstruation, I, I might be a little bit more irritable. There's certain things that might uh, annoy me a little bit more. Uh, usually, 
I, I would say that my men- my menstruation is one of my biggest teachers because throughout all of those, the last 15 years when I've been menstruating, I feel that around the time of my period, anything in my life that needs to change, any relationships that I'm in that aren't serving me, I always use like a job, for example, any job that I'm not happy in or something of that nature or even like a, you know, something that my friend said to me that bothered me or something, that's really going to come out more and really come to my attention in those days before my, my, my period. And I f- have found that over the years, that experience of just connecting <laughs> with that, it's like it forces me to move forward in my life. It forces me to address the things that aren't working. And it forces me to face the things that maybe there, you know, certain things that have been difficult for me uh, emotionally, they keep coming up. And so it kind of forces me to work through them. And so I can't help but wonder what, what my life would be like if I didn't have that teacher to really show me the, th- the things in my life that need to change, show me the things that are working. And uh, so that's one amazing aspect that you may not have thought of that you might find, wow, this is really neat. Uh, I never experienced this before because I've been off the pill for so, or I've been on the pill for so long. Um, so that's kind of more of the emotional aspect of things. Um, but I think on the physical side, you'll also have the opportunity to really see what your menstrual cycles are like. Um, and also to, to really get an understanding. It's so, especially the first couple cycles, when you first start charting, it is so amazing to see your cervical mucus and to know what it is <laughs> and to understand that that's normal. And, um, you know, one of the things that has come out on the podcast a few times is that it's not uncommon for women to, you know, go to the gynecologist or go to their doctor like every month because they think they're ha- they have a yeast infection when really <laughs> they're just having their cervical mucus and they didn't know. And so I have a similar story to that because when I was about 16 or so, 15, 16, around when I first started menstruating, I had this like pain in my side and it was really bothering me. And I was uh, beside myself. And so I remember I, you know, I was talking to my mom and I'm like, mom, there's something wrong with me. I have this pain in my side and I don't know what it is. So she took me to the doctor. So I lived in a small town and not to knock the small town I lived in, but the doctors aren't always so great. But we went to the doctor and the doctor said, okay, did no tests. Let me just put that out there. The doctor did no tests. But the doctor said, okay, you have appendicitis. We're going to schedule you for surgery at four. (laughs) And my mom was like, what? And so she took me to um, the, you know, Edmonton, the next big city over to my pediatrician. And the pediatrician kind of, you know, palpated my abdomen and she might have taken a urine sample. Uh, But then she told me that I was ovulating. (laughs) Yeah, I'm actually laughing at my own joke. But yes, she told me that I was ovulating. And when I think back to that, I just think of how funny that is that I, I literally almost had surgery to have my appendix out because I was ovulating. That's nuts. And uh, so again, Going off the pill gives you an opportunity to really get to know your body. And the fact that you're listening to this podcast right now means that you have way more information than you did back when you were, when you first went on the pill or back when you were a teenager. And so you really have the opportunity to just be in your own skin, experience, you know, your menstrual cycle, uh, but in more of a, in more of a intentional way so you you get to experience it with the knowledge of it instead of just not knowing what the heck is going on and wondering if you have a yeast infection every month and (laughs) um, not knowing that ovulation pain is something that is pretty common and is not appendicitis (laughs) okay the eighth unexpected effect of uh, going off of a pill. So this one is a little tongue in cheek, but you may discover that you don't like the way that your partner smells. And so many of you may have read some articles recently 
or heard just about the studies that they've done to show that when a woman is on hormonal contraceptives, she actually selects different mates. She's actually attracted to a different set of men than the set of men that she may be attracted to when she is not on hormonal contraceptives. And, you know, the study that was done showed that women who were not on hormonal contraceptives would choose men and basically, you know, like the way that these men smelled, like have that uh, more of a, the attraction uh, pheromone thing going on uh, with the men who had the most genetic diversity. So it would actually be like a more suitable partner to add that genetic diversity to your children, (laughs) your childbearing. But when a woman is on hormonal contraceptives, then she would choose partners that would have certain traits that maybe wouldn't be as optimal. So it's really interesting, though, that you cho- you you know you're attracted to different type of men when you're on the pill versus off the pill. The ninth unexpected uh, effect of going off of hormonal contraceptives is that you might get pregnant, and that kind of coincides with uh, what I talked about, you know, in terms of picking a birth control method and. Uh, not knowing when, you know, your period's going to come back and not knowing if your cycles are going to health- get healthy. But on the flip side, you might get pregnant. You might get pregnant right away. It, 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 when you go off of hormonal contraceptives, the possibility then is there that you could get pregnant. And so, you know, I talked about the, at the top of the podcast how the pill works to prevent ovulation from happening, to disrupt it, to interfere with your uterine lining. So to make your uterine lining inhospitable then to a fertilized egg, if uh, an egg managed to get fertilized, and also the cervical uh, fluid, not having any fertile cervical fluid being produced. So then when you go off of hormonal contraceptives, it is a possibility and it's something that you have to think about. And I think that's uh, obviously for a woman who's not ready to to get pregnant and knows that she doesn't uh, want to have a pregnancy right now, that can be really, really scary. Just that that becomes way, it becomes more of a possibility when you go off of it. What I would say is that it's natural to be afraid, especially because we're always told from, and we all were told, I have yet to meet a woman who was not told in her junior high sex ed class that we could get pregnant every single day and that we could get pregnant from the first day of our period to the day before our next one. There was no safe days and, you know, you could just get pregnant anytime. And um, that's not even true, but that's what we're told. And that sticks with us. It, It just puts fear in our hearts around our fertility because we're not, it's not explained to us. We're not told why. We're just told that there's no day that you can have sex ever without getting pregnant. And that sticks with us. And I think that that just causes fear around it. And so naturally, if you're not ready to get pregnant, you know, I'm not going off the pill because I don't want to get pregnant, assuming that you'll get pregnant as soon as you go off the pill. One of the greatest things about fertility awareness is the the awareness part is the the opportunity the amazing opportunity that you have to learn how your body works and to to dispel the myths around fertility so that you know okay i am actually not fertile every single day <laughs> there is a small window of time in each menstrual cycle when i'm actually fertile there is about 7 days you know in each cycle where i'm actually physically capable of getting pregnant now, if I use the method for birth control, then I have to tack on a few days around that to, you know, to make sure that the method is effective. But in the simplest terms, there's about seven days or so where you can consider yourself fertile. And so I feel like that knowledge kind of changes the game because then you don't have to be afraid all the time <laughs> about your fertility. And especially if you're, if you have the opportunity to learn from an educator, if, you, if, if you're having trouble, I think that not every woman needs to learn from an educator, obviously. I think that the, the knowledge itself isn't so hard. It's actually fairly straightforward. I think the challenge is when a woman's cycle doesn't fall within the normal parameters. So if a woman is st- starting to use fertility awareness and her cycles are pretty much healthy and normal and they're, 
you know, pretty around. So let's say her cycles are like 28 to 30 days and she has her menstruation and it's fully normal and she has a few dry days and then she has a few mucus days and then she ovulates and then she has, you know, her post ovulatory phase that's all dry and there's nothing of note. It's all just falling within the realm of normal and it looks just like it does in the book (laughs) whatever book you read whether you read taking charge of your fertility or katie singer's the garden of fertility or however whatever charting system you use if your cycles look like they do in the textbook you probably don't need an instructor (laughs) because it'll be so easy but then for the rest of us if our cycles are not looking like that not only might you need some help to figure out what it Um, how to chart and what's happening, you know, how to check your mucus if you're not seeing very much or if you're seeing it every day, what does that mean? I think part of it is the the figuring out how to chart if your cycles are not just just run of the mill. But the other part of it is that you don't know what you don't know. And so when you work with an instructor, especially an instructor who is educated in the health aspect of it and how your cycle health relates to your hormonal health and how these things interplay, then you have a second set of eyes who can point out to you, you know what, your cervical mucus isn't supposed to be yellow. That is an indication of a problem. Or, you know, you're having a lot of days of mucus every month. Uh, You know, let's look into, you know, your cervical health. Let's look into your hormonal health. Let's find out what's happening with your mucus. And so that's the other aspect of it where, working with uh, a teacher can be helpful to to figure all of that out. That's a little bit of a tangent (laughs) from you might get pregnant. But I feel like that is part of the conversation because I think we're all afraid that as soon as you as soon as you go off of hormonal contraceptives, you're going to get pregnant that day. And I think one thing to know is that we're not fertile every single day. That's we were told that but we're not there's only a small window of fertility. And the other thing is that you just never know what your cycles are going to be like after you go off of hormonal contraceptives. So you might get pregnant, if you go off, you might, it might happen right away. And so you have to make sure that you plan what type of birth control you're going to use and, you know, have conversations with your partner and make sure you're both comfortable with the decision that you've made and make sure you're clear on your intentions. It's important to know that, but it's also important to put those fears into perspective and just keep in mind, remember to, I, I would say, be confident in your ability <laughs> to prevent pregnancy if that's what you're wanting to do. And also, you know, achieve pregnancy if that's what you're wanting to do. One other thing that I'll mention is that one of the side effects of the birth control pills that I didn't have listed specifically is nutrient deficiencies. The pill changes how your your body relays its hormonal messages messages. The pill also dis, it also has an impact on different areas of the body. So uh, when a woman is on hormonal contraceptives, it has a disruptive effect on her gut flora. So on her internal microbiota, her gut bacteria, and not only can it have an impact on the gut flora, but it can also impact a woman's nutrient stores. And so the pill has been associated with a number of nutrient deficiencies, uh, especially B vitamins. So like fol- folate, folic acid, you know, zinc, magnesium. And so there's, you know, there's several key nutrients for fertility and pregnancy that are notoriously kind of depleted when a woman is on hormonal birth control. So although it might be exactly what you want to get pregnant immediately after going off of the pill, uh, one of the things to consider as well is that even if you really want to start your family, it may be a good idea to, again, give your body several months and intentionally work towards replenishing those nutrients and getting your body stores up to where they need to be to support pregnancy. Uh, If you're going into pregnancy with nutrient deficiencies, not only can that be stressful on your body, but I think one of the things to remember, and it's something that I've touched on in a number of my recent podcast episodes, is that, you know, when you're trying to get pregnant, that's the goal. And you're thinking about trying to get pregnant. What you're not thinking about is what am I going to be like after the baby comes? What you're not thinking of is your own health 
and how that is going to impact how how you're able to care for your new baby. Uh, new babies require, you know, 24-7 <laughs> care. It's a really stressful time and it's often a time where y- your needs go to the wayside. So if you're going into pregnancy already deficient, depleted in nutrients, it can have an impact on your body and it can make it a lot more difficult in the postpartum period. Uh, because the postpartum period is very taxing then. You've just had a baby and then if you're breastfeeding, that means that your baby's sucking out even more nutrients, quite literally. And so it's just something to consider. I mean, you may get pregnant right away and it's something to consider that, you know, even if you're you're wanting to try, you might want to give yourself, you know, a little bit of buffer, a couple months at least to see how everything plays out. And finally, number 10, you might discover that you can't get pregnant. And I think that that is the most, you know, devastating part of of this whole situation. Now, this is not to say that the pill is causing anybody to be infertile. That's not what I'm getting at. Uh, But as I had mentioned earlier, you know, if a woman has some sort of menstrual cycle irregularity or some sort of disease process happening in the background. So for example, you know, if a woman is experiencing PCOS and she's put on the pill, that disease process, you know, continues happening in the background. It's not being addressed. So it's not to say that the pill causes, you know, any type of fertility issues, but if a woman has some sort of imbalance or issue, uh, the pill is masking it and, and giving you a fake period to make you feel better while this disease process is happening in the background. And so it, really it's doing a disservice to you because then you don't have the opportunity to, to really know that there's a problem and then address it before um, you're ready to get pregnant. Because then what usually happens is you're on the pill and then you get off the pill and then you try to get pregnant right away. And so you might go off the pill and discover that uh, it doesn't happen as quickly as you thought it would. Uh, Your period doesn't come back as quickly as you thought it would. Your period isn't healthy and you didn't even think that that was a thing. Um, Or you might find just that you encounter more difficulty than you thought you would. And that's something to consider as well, especially when considering when is the right time to come off of the pill. I think that that belief that we're told that we're fertile every single day and that we have to be essentially just on guard and worried all the time because we could get pregnant all the time. I feel like that does a huge disservice to women because the other thing, the other piece is that your fertility changes throughout the years. So there's no magical number that we can say, okay, when you turn this old, this is what happens. But our fertility does change with age. And so then that's another factor. Your fertility is different in your 20s than it is in your 30s and in your 40s. That belief that we're fertile at the time, I feel like that keeps women on the pill instead of encouraging women to to start focusing on their fertility well before they're ready to start trying to conceive. And so I think that that's something to really keep in mind. You know, you might get pregnant right away. It could happen. And I think that's the fear. But you also might, it might take you a little bit of time and you don't know how long it's going to take you. So many women have been able to improve their cycles. You know, charting, tracking your cycles is a really interesting process because uh, not only can you use it, you know, for your benefit, so as a birth control, or you can use it to, to achieve pregnancy, to time sex based on the, the best time to get pregnant in your fertile window. But another really neat thing is that if you say, say you come off of hormonal contraceptives and your cycles are kind of wonky, and you're starting to make changes, you're working with somebody and you're, you know, changing up your diet and you're exercising, getting more sleep or whatever the case is, you end up having this real time (laughs) measure of what's happening in your cycle. It's really, really neat because you can actually see if what you're doing is working (laughs) just by the changes in your cycle. So uh, over the, over the course of, let's say, you know, three or four cycles, you might notice that your cervical mucus quality improves, or you might notice that your luteal phase lengthens a bit. These are things that you can see in your charts, which is really, really neat, really exciting. And 
really helpful, especially when you're making all these changes, especially if you're trying to improve your fertility and you're planning to get pregnant, it can be really, really helpful to, to have that visual and see like, is this working? Is it not? It's important to have a realistic picture of what can happen when you go off of the pill. And I think that unfortunately, most women just expect, and why wouldn't we? That's what we're told. But most women just expect that we're going to go off the pill and then everything's just going to be great right away. And no one ever told you that it might take you six months to get your period back. (laughs) And that's like the most annoying, frustrating, challenging, gut-wrenching six months when you're wondering if there's something wrong with you. Then when your period finally comes back, it's kind of not the way you thought it would be. So I hope that this episode was helpful for you. I hope that I touched on some points that made you think a little bit or if you learned something. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this episode, this format, especially because I strayed from my usual format and just had a little chat with you today. So I hope you enjoyed it and uh, stop by the show notes page and let me know if you like this format or, um, you know, one thing that stood out for you. I'd love to hear your feedback. So uh, head to fertilityfriday.com slash 79 and let me know what you thought. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed today's show, please share it with a friend. You'll find the show notes page for today's episode at fertilityfriday.com slash 79. If you've been enjoying the podcast, please look for it on iTunes and leave a five-star review so that more people can find it. And make sure to head over to fertilityfriday.com and join my email list. If you have an idea for a podcast episode or a guest suggestion, send me an email at info at fertilityfriday.com. And remember, you don't have to figure it all out yourself. I love helping women to connect with their cycles and I can't wait to delve in with you and help you improve your cycle health and fertility. Get started today with a free 15 minute consultation with me by heading over to fertilityfriday.com slash coaching or just click the work with me button on my website. Thanks again for hanging out with me today. I appreciate all of you for taking the time to tune into the podcast, whether you're on the go or commuting to work or whatever you're doing. Thank you so much for letting me be part of your day. And as always, until next time, be well and happy charting.